All right. Um, thank you again, Mr. Hackett, for coming today to speak to my students. This class is uh, our intro to teaching class, and we've been learning a little bit about the structure of school, the different roles that people have at school. And we just want to know a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are, where you are now. Uh, so intro to education, are we talking like ninth graders or do you have a little bit of a mix? We have mostly ninth graders in this okay. class, but we do have some sophomores and juniors. Okay, as well. cool, cool. Uh, well, <clears throat> let's put it this way. Um, it kind of started in high school for me, for education, because I was a, I was a high school athlete and I had some really good coaches uh, who are obviously teachers. Um, therefore, after college, you know, they moved on as coaches and became administrators themselves. Um, and then after college, when I got back from college, I got a call one day about uh, coming over and working for one of my high school wrestling coaches um, and uh, who was a principal at the time. And kind of before then, I got into education, one, because I love coaching. I love wrestling. And I, and I, I had role models as my coaches. And then my father, who is an educator, he's actually the vice president of Southeastern University, oh, wow. uh, grew up and he was a coach. He was also a teacher. Um, he still, even as vice president, he still required his boss to say that I'll, I'll be vice president, but I want to teach classes still because his passion for teaching, um, he loves that. So, and then I remember him telling me growing up, you know, education is not a bad gig because, you know, he had a friend that would teach all year and then save his money. And then about the second day after school was out, he would travel the entire summer. I mean, what other job do you get paid over the summer and get the kind of vacations and stuff like that? So there, there's things about education that not just your background, but things you kind of learn that this is not such a bad gig. But my biggest passion obviously came from my wrestling coaches and um, being uh, wanting to coach after college and so forth, because I started coaching right out of college also. So I did 18 years of coaching. I've done this is my 20th year of education, 15 years in the classroom, um, then finally moved on to be an administrator. Um, so I've got a lot of good mentors, one being my father and then with coaches. And you'll find a lot of administrators that I personally think that are good are because they are were coaches, you know, because you kind of do things on the fly, which you have to do as a coach and so forth. So that's kind of how I got into it. Um, I've taught up in Duval County. I've taught in Brevard County. I've taught uh, middle school level, high school level, and I did was certified in social studies and physical education. Okay. And then I had a uh, a assistant principal at one of my schools um, who honestly. I looked at her one day and said, you know, I'll be frank. I thought she was pretty dumb as a box of rocks. And, uh, and I said to myself, man, I can do that job better than she can. And that kind of gave me the drive to further my education. And uh, you don't make a lot of money, you know, um, but the rewards you get from it, because if I can get two kids to graduate or I can see one of my wrestlers be successful or whatever it is, you know, it's worth the entire you know, year of teaching. And also my wife is a third grade teacher at the elementary. Now we don't talk about certain things because high school and uh, elementary do not mix. It's two different beasts. But that's, that's kind of my background with teaching. That's really interesting. And you have a pretty varied uh, career too. So what would you say would, was the biggest um, thing you noticed in your transition from the classroom to being an administrator? You don't sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't. I mean, it's like now you're in charge. Uh, you're in charge of just every little thing possibly. Uh, Miss Clark always calls me jack of all trades because I do a little bit of everything. Uh, work with the teachers, work with the kids. And, and honestly, there's days I just want to get in the classrooms just so I can see the kids, you know, because honestly, that's why I got into it was, you know, seeing kids succeed in life because um, people did it for me, you know, as long as I can help somebody be successful. Now I'm also the bad guy here at the school, the guy who gets rid of kids. So usually when I call into a classroom, you can hear the ooh in the background when I say you got to see Mr. Hackett. But you know, honestly, my goal is to get every kid at this school graduated and move on. And whether they go to college or not, that they can be successful in life and whatever they do. 
you know, have something that they can take with them because you don't get to redo high school. You know, college, you could take 10 years to finish if you wanted to. You could take your time. And that's something that I also learned when I look back is, you know, I went to high school and I went right to college and I got my four-year degree. Then I traveled. You know, then I went and had some fun, but I always had a degree to fall back on, you know. And the one thing with having that degree is that you can get into teaching. Now, if you got an education degree, it's a lot, e a lot easier because you got a lot of teachers out there that are, they don't have educational experience. So it, it's, it's a big adaption, you know. And honestly, I don't have a degree in education. I actually have a degree in uh, church ministries because I went to a Baptist college and that was the easiest way for me to graduate. But then I got my master's in education. And I decided, because it costs some money to get your master's degree, I decided with my wife, I said, you know, if I just stayed in the classroom after I paid off my master's degree, you know, um, I'd still retire with an extra $30,000. So it was kind of worth it if I never went into uh, administration. But when I had that lady that I figured I could do her job, that kind of pushed me to do the, finish my master's. Um, do the aspiring leaders program for the county for to get into the AP pool. And I finally, I mean, after nine interviews, I finally got a dean job here with our first principal and then moved. And I was actually dean with Miss Clark and Mr. Lewis. Uh, we were all deans together and she was AD, Miss Clark. And then she moved up to AP and I took over as AD. So I got experience there too. And then next year, me and Lewis both got moved up to APs. You know, and we just work. I mean, it's fun. It's a lot of adult management sometimes, which you'd be surprised at. You would think people with college educations could do certain things, but, you know, that's why I said some days being just with the kids is, you know, I got I to gotta get in the classroom, you know, just to get out there. But I'm hoping I'm answering your questions. I can ramble. No, no, you're doing great. You're doing great. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned a little bit about your role now, which is more of the disciplinary side. Can you talk a little bit about what your role now consists of and what you have to do? Uh, I'm in charge of the dean's discipline when it kind of comes down to it. The, the nice thing about our group here, as you'll find, you could probably go to another school and I guarantee you not all your administrators all get along. And the nice thing about our group uh, with Ms. Clark and us APs, and that includes our deans and some of the other staff, I think we have a really good staff. Um, but our, we work together. So if something just needs to get done, we have our certain jobs, but we kind of also just all do whatever needs to get done. And it gets done. And now, like I said, the nice thing about me being in the uh, classroom for a long time before getting an administration and then moving around in different counties as I've got to see what a good leader is, a good principal is, and what a good principal is not. Same with the AP. So I've learned what I would do, what I wouldn't do, what you should do. And one thing is to make my staff happy, you know, because I got a lot of teachers that'll text me and, you know, if it's an AC or this, that, and the other, you know, I just stop what I'm doing, go take care of them because if my teachers are happy, my kids are happy. You know, because what kid, student wants to come to school and deal with some teacher just not in having a having a bad day? That's that, that ain't worth it. So if the AC is working, they're happy. You know, stuff like that. If I can get them the things they need, then they're happy. Um, so we we do a little bit of everything. There's we I could be specific, but I'm across the board everything. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Do you think that um, your experience? Like you kind of mentioned this, that your experience in different areas has made you be better at your job. Oh, absolutely. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Um, I go to I go to Mr. Lewis for th certain things um, and bounce ideas off each other's heads. Same with Miss Robinson. Same with Miss Clark. Same with you know uh, Miss Johnson. I mean, we're always, hey, what do you think about this? You know, we do lunch duty together, and that's times when we get to sit and say, hey, I, I had a I had this situation or I had this parent, what would you do? You know, I mean, you can't not ask, you know, because yeah. we want to do it right. And we want Miss Clark to have a somewhat enjoyable evening and not get flooded with phone calls or a, a superintendent or this, that, the other. So we really work off each other and learn from each other. And I think being diverse is, yeah, you can do it. And, and there's things that they, I'm gonna be honest, they don't teach you what to do in your master's program. Um, they, they kind of say this and that, but that's not, you just got to jump in there and do it. And I think that's the same way with 
being a teacher. You just got to do it. And hey, did this work in the classroom today? No, we got to tweak it. Did my kids getting it? No, okay, I got to fix this. You know, and, and that's why I think coaches are good at it because, you know, they constantly trying to be the best. You want the best team? I want to have the best classes. I want to have the best school. And I will say, and I'm biased, but I will say I've been around, but I'm telling you, Ridge Community High School is probably the best, if not the best, high school in the county, if not Central Florida. I mean, this we have our kids do the right thing and i we i think miss clark has done a great job jumping in and hiring some more new staff members i think the ones that staff teachers that are here you know they want to be here and they come to work and you know i can walk in the class and i don't have to worry about it our discipline our numbers are way low compared to any other high school in the county we don't have to do it our kids are good and our teachers are good um, yeah, I, I have to agree. I work with so many amazing teachers on our campus. And you're right. I, this year, I have had so many great students, even um, the ones that are in this call right now, I've been doing a really good job on, you know, on eSchool. So, um, so yeah, I, I have to agree with you. And you're right. I Wanting to be the best is definitely uh, a drive for me as well, making this school better. Um, you mentioned a little bit how your wrestling experience and the coaches that you saw when you were a student really you know, helped you um, lead you into education. But, you know, was there anything else as your experience as a student that you try to remember when you're doing your job every day? I mean, if you always think back, and I can tell you, you could probably pull just about anybody who's in education. There was somebody that made a difference. I mean, I could, I could pull, I could pull, uh, I had a great English teacher for 12th grade year. I remember her and what I learned from her. She taught me how to write. Um, I wasn't that good of a writer. And when you get to college, all you do is write, you know, um, I had a human anatomy uh, teacher that, you know, I enjoyed. She just made, you know, the class fun. I mean, because when you got seven classes, you know, I want to try to enjoy seven classes <laughs> during the day as a student, you know, but so when you got teachers that you can't wait to get to their class, I mean, that makes, that makes coming to school because, I deal with uh, truancy and absences, and it's like if I got, if I can find something to get a kid connected, the kid comes, they'll come to school just for that one class, you know. So I had that experience in the classroom as a student with teachers that just, I cannot think back about my teachers from, gosh, it's been 30 years since you know, I was in high school. And then um, I had some college professors that I thought were awesome. Um, I mean, and then I say my dad, another part of being in education is, my dad's vice president at Southeastern. My brother-in-law is the executive vice president. My sister is a college professor in the Department of Education at Southeastern. I'm the black sheep of the family. Um, but, you know, I come from a family of educators too, you know, and it's just making that difference in somebody's life, like being successful because you don't know what every kid brings in the door that day. You know, you don't know what they go home to every night. And there's kids that go home to a hotel room because they don't have a place to live, you know. Same with your athletes and so forth. So I get passionate about education uh, from having mentors because teachers and coaches did something for me, pushed me to be somebody. And I wanna give that back to the students that I see every day on this campus. That's great, yeah, absolutely. Um, what would you say are some of the easiest parts of your job? And what, are, what would you say are some of the hardest parts of your job? easiest i don't know what's easy <laughs> uh <clears throat> i don't think there's anything real completely easy except for showing up for work which i i because I, I like coming to work so i come early <laughs> you know <laughs> so i can make sure i'm ready to go that day you know uh hardest part of the job is coming back to work at night sometimes um because i have a wife and two kids and you know i drive a good distance you know so if my day starts at 4 30 a.m and last like yesterday last night i didn't get home until 10 o'clock at night because i did work all day went home real quick saw my wife and kids for a few minutes came back and did girl soccer last night you know so that's the hardest part is you know time away with your family um parents but you get to learn to deal with them uh parents you see why a student is the way they are sometimes because mm. they're they're an extension of their their guardians or whoever they live with. I mean, and you have parents that just don't care. Um, 
Hold on one second. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I have a quick question. Hey, can I put you guys on mute and I'll be right back to you? Sure thing. Okay. Um, okay, guys, just so you can see on my screen, are you able to see my screen okay, everybody? Yeah. Okay, thanks, Paula. Um, I know we had a couple people who were having some Wi-Fi issues, so I am going to fix your attendance very quick for those of you who just came in. Um, I mentioned to you that I would, so I'm doing that now. Um, but everyone, yes, yes Coralies. Um, I can't see the screen. The you, are you sure? Are you share screening? I was share screening. Um, oh, okay. Maybe I paused it so I could fix the yeah. attendance real quick. Yeah, I must have done that. Because it it's not showing me out up. a few minutes ago. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it now, Coralies? Uh, hold on. No. Um, yes, I, I can. Only see um, I can. Okay. Paula can and I Jasmine. Try to long, go, yeah, can if, I try you, to long if you want to leave and works. try to come back, yeah, go ahead and do that for us. Okay. All right, so there's your other hard thing. Um, phone calls all day long. You don't know who they are, but it has to deal with something or some issue at school and so forth. Uh, I'll be honest, this year, uh, my biggest challenge has been uh, the pandemic because mm -hmm. right now, uh, Ms. Johnson and I are the pandemic coordinators. So I deal with the health department on a daily basis. My entire Thanksgiving break, I was on the phone every single day except the last Sunday. Uh, dealing with cases and, and quarantines and this and that. And like I said, sometimes, you know, when I say being an administrator is adult management, all I'm doing is asking a teacher to do a seating chart. And I go to pull a seating chart and they ain't got no seating chart in there. And I'm not the biggest computer genius, but I can do a seating chart, <laughs> you know? And we've asked them over and over and over and over and over and over again. So students, you see why your teachers get frustrated because we tell you the same thing over and over and over and over again, and you don't do it. You know, we're not asking a lot. And, you know, as a student, if you just show up to school and build a relationship with your uh, with your teacher, you know, you, you, you're going to be successful and, and learn something and get something out of it. So I get constant bothered. Yeah, you're always having to, to change yes. what you're doing in the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It's so interesting. Every administrator that I've talked that I've we've spoken to so far has said pretty much the same thing. It's just kind of like. Whatever's happening, it's happening in the moment. There's not a lot of planning that, you know, goes into their day. I keep lists because I have to. And I always tell the teachers, email me because I forget. And I got to check my email first thing and then add a list. And then I have a list of things I want to get done. But nothing gets done on that day because that day is you got to deal with whatever walks in the door. So it, it's kind of rewarding to an extent because, you know, it's never a dull day at the Ridge is what we always say. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yes, like as I'm talking to you guys, I got one of my county maintenance workers just walks in and does whatever he wants, has his break right here in my office. Say hi, Dan. Good this morning, is, this everybody. Is Dan. Good morning. This is Dan. This is our carpenter. Good morning. Uh, who, does who am I speaking with? That is our education classes. That's Miss Hanley. Good morning, Miss Hanley. And, Good morning, uh, Dan. I don't let Hackett fool you. I show up here and I take care of the school and the reason why I'm here eating my lunch because I'm checking in like you're supposed to. <laughs> Good for you. Dan's Thank our you. carpenter and, you know, we deal with a lot of issues and he's one of our guys, our go-to guys. We can call or text at any time and he gets stuff fixed and you'd be surprised how much stuff has to be done when you got 74 acres, you know, and yep. students that don't you know, do what they're supposed to do all the time. But like I said, I mean, when you, when you, I look at Ridge as a whole and our student body, um, they, they 98% of the time do the right thing. They, our kids know how to act, you know, and when they're redirected or, or this or that, the other, I mean, there's some ones that, you know, don't want to do it right away. But for the most part, man, I mean, our campus is clean because our kids take care of it. Um, and, and, our discipline numbers are low, which is, uh, we thrive on that when it comes to district reports and state reports and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
you know, I, I don't know, maybe you would answer this question, but, you know, education is changing now in 2020. Um, but do you think that there should be something that should change about our current education system? What would it be and why? Get rid of testing. I, 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 I'll be honest. All right. Back when I started, it was the FCAT. And um, then it changed into the FSA and everything else. And we've got all these re exit exams. You know, how about the kid who's got a 3.8 GPA, goes to come to school every day. He's involved in uh, athletics or he's involved in some type of clubs, you know, awesome family, whatever. And then he's just a bad test taker. So you're telling me you're not going to give a kid a high school diploma with a 3.8, okay, that even maybe took some dual enrollment classes or this, that, the other, just because he can't pass the FSA or the algebra EOC? I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. And then what college, what college cares about your FSA or algebra EOC scores? I don't know any out there. Mm -mm. Okay, so what, what's a standardized test? Is, is you used to be used as a measuring tool to find out where your kids are at, not for an exit exam, okay? And the same thing applies when it comes to a teacher trying to get their credentials. I had a guy I worked with who got his master's in education also. Uh, he was a high school college athlete, you know, uh, Great coach, great teacher, moved up into administration, could not pass the math part of the uh, general general knowledge test. I don't know how I did uh, so many years ago, but, you know, I mean, are you kidding me? So I'm not going to give them a credential just because he's not good in math? It, it, that doesn't make sense to me. Now, I married well, you know, because my wife loves math, and I let her do all the bills. So note to self, find the right spouse. <laughs> make your life make your life uh, a lot better but i mean that's what i don't like testing why 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 we put too much emphasis on testing i mean high school should be and school should be you learn but we also prepare you to be successful in life um and not just a good test taker and then i've got a teacher who's a horrible in the classroom because but he's got his credentials because he passed all the tests because he, he could take a test. So I, I, it, that doesn't make sense. Either. That's what I think needs to change is the emphasis on testing. You know, it used to be back in the day, GPA, and that was it. I mean, I think they might, we might've taken the PSAT. We had to take the SAT and ACT just to get into college. And even in college, you take that, you don't have to get a certain score, certain colleges, but I mean, they'll still take you. No matter what, they put you on academic probation and that's it, you know? So I, that's, that's the biggest thing that I think needs to change is the emphasis on testing. Get rid of it. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you, you already kind of mentioned a little bit of the COVID-19 stuff, but, you know, is, has your, what has changed? What, is the, what are some of the main things that have changed for you um, with the new protocols for the pandemic and all of that kind of stuff? <laughs> um, honestly, I'm... I'm I'm constantly on call. Uh, like I said, Thanksgiving, I get, we were going to go do family Christmas present, our pictures. We were ready to walk out the door. And I 8 30 in the morning, I got the phone call from DOH. Another morning, I'm at Walmart at 8 o'clock in the morning, phone call from DOH. Every time my phone rings, I'm hoping it's not the Department of Health. Uh, we're low on our cases, honestly. Um, a lot of them has been some with e learners. So we haven't had any quarantine. I had one yesterday. It was only 26 kids. Um, there are schools that have quarantined way more than us. Um, that you do have the protocols in place. I hate wearing a mask, to be honest with you. I mean, I can't wait to get to normal. Who ever thought in 46 years I'd be walking around having to wear a mask everywhere I go? I would have never thought that in my life. Um, and my kids have to wear a mask to school all day. And I, I give kudos to our teachers who are teaching in a mask all day, same with our students, because my wife teaches all day and she wears a mask, you know, I, and I get my, I catch myself talking to somebody and I start pulling it down because it's like interferes with me having a conversation, but I understand that's the things we have to do. I, I hope society moves forward from this um, and something changes so we can kind of get life back to normal. 
Um, but I, I give props to our students that I, when you look around there, they have issues at other schools. Uh, we hear about it, that kids refuse to wear a mask, this, that, and the other. And our kids do what they're asked to do. They really do. I'm telling you, we've got one of the best high schools in the state of Florida, if you ask me. Um, do you think we'll ever go back to not wearing masks and doing what we normally do in the classroom? <clears throat> I'm not a politic guy, though you should always vote because you have that right to. Um, I think we have a governor. I honestly think we have a governor that does push education. He's supported education. I've been through other governors and being an educator, you want somebody in office that supports education. Uh, I think he is pro-education. Um, and he wants to keep schools open. And I think that's that the executive order that came out that affects our schools and our districts around the state of Florida, uh, the new spring procedures, the, he wants kids back. I think studies are out there. And if you watch the news, uh, guys, that you're getting older, you need to start watching the news, you know, pick one news channel, one news anchor that, you know, so you can just follow stuff or pull up and MSN dot com and, and see what's going on because things will affect you the older you get um, and affect your job or you know your lifestyle and this is one thing and um, I think the study is showing that the e-learning honestly is not as effective as face to face I um, mean one you're missing out on some building a relationship with a student honestly I think that's important as an educator and an administrator I think um, I think they don't pay attention as much. You you blow it off easier. I hated it with a seven year old and a nine year old at home, um, a wife who's trying to teach from home, while my kids are trying to work at the same time I'm trying to work. It was it was a absolute nightmare. And everybody said, "What are you sending your kids back to school?" Absolutely. <laughs> they they. I could see where my kids started hating not interacting with other 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 kids, and they need that. Mm -hmm. and so I think you need that interaction. You need that interaction and development of skills. Like I said, education is sometimes more than just a book. Um, it's that interaction and learning how to deal with people. So when you have a job and a boss you hate, or uh, somebody you got to work with that you don't like, but you learn to, you know, make it work. You know, because you always got to have that one. But I tell kids all the time, you know, one, why are you late for school? Why are you late for class? Because if I was late for work every day, I wouldn't have a job. OK, and I got a lot of bills <laughs> because my kids are expensive. You know, we spoil them. All right. But that's a good thing. Um, so I get on kids all the time with that. And then you're talking. <clears throat> our kids do it all the time. I mean, you got to be successful. It's more than that. So I, I think we will move forward next semester and start seeing some changes. Um, you, and if you watch the news about the vaccines and so forth, I mean, I hope that makes a makes a positive indent on the spread of what's going on and so forth. But you know, I don't think I have yet to hear one school shutting down for good. They've done to me learning, but they're not shutting down schools. Not I haven't heard one in. in in the United States of America, I mean, you, you got to have an education. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to ask the students, because um, I did leave some room for them to ask questions of you. So if anyone has a question that they would like to ask Mr. Hackett, you can type it in the chat. Um, I'll wait a few minutes to see who has got a question that may want to ask in the chat. While we're waiting, Mr. Hackett, um, you know, like I said, we've got freshmen all the way. I do believe we might have a senior in here. Um, what would be some words of wisdom that you would want to share with these students as they're continuing their education and moving on to um, life outside of high school? Oh, you got to find what you got to find what you're passionate about, and you can go after it. You know, just because you put it this way, my dad's got two doctor's degrees, two master's degrees. And this and that, and he'd walk away from vice. He's actually stepping down at the end of the year, um, but he won't walk away from being in a classroom. He had a boss. He had a boss that uh, a president that came in years ago and said, and he was vice president years ago, 
and said, um, I can't have you in the classroom. And my dad stepped away and said, no, this is my passion. And he went back full time in the classroom. And then a new president came in and said, I need you as I'll do whatever you want. I need you as my VP because I know your track record and so forth. So, and that was part of the deal, but it was, to me, it's, and that taught me about having something you're passionate about. So it doesn't matter if you go, what your degree is, it's what you're passionate about and what you want to go after. You need to figure that out and go after it. But you also have to have the realization that you're on your own after a while. You don't get to live with mommy and daddy. You know, I mean, my kids, it, and one thing I learned as a student and being an athlete is because that was my ticket to get out of the house because my parents said they ain't paying for college. So I knew I had to get decent grades, okay, and to get a scholarship, and that's what I got, a scholarship, on athletic scholarship, but that was partly for having a decent grade, to get out, you know, that was my ticket out. So what's your ticket out, and then how are you going to be successful with that? So, I mean, you, you got to think about, I got a car payment, car insurance, gas, food, clothes, place to live, add all that stuff up. And they don't teach you that stuff in some of your classes that, you know, these are the things that you got to pay for. Okay. Uh, buying a house, how much money you have to have to put down on a house, uh, student loans, this and that. So find out what you want to do and go after it. You're not going to know exactly what you do maybe right away, but whatever it is, you just have to, I love coming to work. I would rather work than be off sometimes because I just, I love it. I mean, it's just something I do. So it's like, I get to be, I get to enjoy what I do. You know, my wife, she's crazy third grade teacher and <laughs> she gets a little stressful, but she loves going to work. I mean, we, we don't take off work, neither of us, because we love what we do. And we only take off if it's like, we got to, the kids are sick or we, you know, don't have a childcare or something, or we have an appointment, you know, but it's because we get paid to do what we want to do. And then if you stick with education, I'm telling you, you got two weeks off Christmas, you get Thanksgiving break for a week paid. You get what, two, almost two months off of summer? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, paid. And then you can work a second job. And I still work a second job. I work on Saturdays at a resort, you know, and I, I've always had an extra job, but it puts money in the bank and, you know, my family can do without. So you got to think about that things in life that you want to do and how are you going to do it? You got to start making a plan. So that's my word of advice. Be passionate about what you do and start creating a plan of what you think you you you, you want to be successful doing. Absolutely. Um, Tori wanted to know if you think that e-learning might continue for the rest of the year. The governor has already said it in his executive order that he will fund e-learning for the rest of the year. Now, please understand there's funding that is behind e-learning. OK, uh, there's a lot that goes into education when you get onto the administrator side. I mean, there's more than just me walking around seeing teachers. I mean, I've got work on the computer that has to be due, reports that have to be turned in, state reports, this, that and the other. So and, and, and that's fun. But there's there's a lot that's into it. I think there's that funding aspect with the e-learning that may not move forward the following year. But I think. For as of now, it will for the end of the year because I think they're waiting to see what happens. Now, realize the president's order ends in December, okay? All right, so, um, and then with a governor who's pro-education, remember, your state's pretty much run by your governor, not necessarily the president, okay? And it's your schools that are ran by the state and your governor. That's why if you look at the uh, Board of Education, the uh, DOE website, you'll see the governor directly on Work, works directly with the uh, educational commissioner, okay? And people need to realize that it's your state taxes. So it's going to be what the people want to do. But I think it's going to be, it's definitely set in place for the rest of the school year. Next year, I think they're going to, I think they're going to figure out something else. Now, with e-learning being second semester, the governor has also said any student who is not making satisfactory, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, progress or is failing a core class needs to come back to face to face. So there's, there's stipulations in there with the executive order. That's what I'm saying. Y'all got to watch the news once in a while just to know what's going on and how it affects you directly. 
Uh, Jasmine asks, if you could change one thing at Ridge besides testing, what would you change? I don't know, man. I mean, I think I, I think we've got a really good school. I wish we had a lot more money so we could do a lot more things. I, I, I think we get, I get, I get, we get gypped on our budget. Um, I think we should get more money because we are bigger. Um, there's a lot of factors involved because if I could change the fact that we had more cash flow into uh, student funding and certain things, we could do the camp, camp. We could do better things for the campus that would benefit both the teachers and the students. I um, mean, I would like to put some money into that weight room down there for the athletes. I we need some storage facilities. Uh, our different departments, you know. Um, need money to survive and you know it, it's tiresome always having to fundraise to do things um, it'd be nice if we had a bigger budget that's what I wish I could change it would be a, the amount of our budget so we could put that back into our school and back into good use for our students and staff yeah um, Julianne would like to know uh, what would you do if you weren't working as an administrator uh, <laughs> I've done it. Let's put it this way. I've done everything. I've dug ditches. I know I, I grew up on construction. Um, and that's, which is nice when you own your own house, you do a lot of work yourself. It's cheaper, you know, and I, you know, you had to pay your way, you know, after college, um, I wanted to travel. So I did a, multiple jobs, waited tables. I was a line cook. I was a chef. I was, I, I've done everything. Um, but I'm telling you what, when you, I've, gone, I've been a roofer and in the middle of summer on a roof, you need to figure out that'll give you a one, about two hours at doing that. You'll go, okay, I need to find something I can get paid to do or maybe I'm in AC or something else. But, you know, I, I've always had a passion for education and coaching. Um, I probably, I'm not that far away from retirement. Um, if I really wanted to retire, my kids are still young. I'd like to move up one day and be a principal, but I have no desire to do that anytime soon because I like having, I like seeing my kids and as a principal, it's a different beast. Um, you are the person, <laughs> no matter what, you the one that gets phone call. So I, it's, I'm not time for that. Maybe my last five years or something, but I don't think I'll ever get out of it. You know, uh, I like it too much. I got, <laughs> I got a lot of friends in education, so I don't know what I would do. Be bored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. Very true. I think um, I would come back doing something. Go bag it. Well, Publix. So I could buy stock. Uh, I, do, I don't. I want to be wary of your time. So I think I have one last question for you um, from Julianne. What advice would you give a young person who doesn't, who wants to go to college um, after high school and not necessarily pursue a career? What some sort of things should they keep in mind if they're going to college? Oh, well, like I said, you got to come up with a plan. Um, I knocked mine out. I lost a year from transferring. I got title nine. So it took me five years to get a four year degree because I lost a year's credit transferring from Liberty University down to Southeastern. Um, but not a big deal. But you need to space it out. Um, enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> You've got to go after it. So if you're not a morning person, schedule your classes right. You know, uh, you can do certain days, but it's it's hard to give advice because it depends on how quick you want to do it and how quick you want to get out of it. But you need to enjoy it. But remember, you're spending money, all right, no matter what, because if it's a scholarship, you know, they'll pull your scholarship. If you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, if it's your own money, and you're spending $400 on one class and you're not showing up for class, you don't get your money back, you know? And then when you, when you finally do graduate and you're in debt, you know, because you, you have to pay that money back eventually, you know? Um, so kind of have a game plan uh, where you want to go. If you want to do uh, community college first, knock out some pre-elective classes and get that done. Um, and then, so it's cheaper. So come up with that. You just need that game plan and you need to factor in your finances, how you're paying for it. I, I wanted to get, I wanted to go away. So I went from Florida to Virginia, college up in Virginia. I wanted to get out of the house. 
And I, I can remember I had a ball. I mean, I did things up there that, you know, because I wasn't from Virginia. I've been around the country and lived a lot of different places. But I, I was able to use that and get away. So, you know, you've got to have a game plan and figure out what you really want to do. If, this is, if college is your thing, start planning ahead. Don't wait to the last minute. You know, start looking at schools. You, what you guys have is what I never had. And that's the internet. Okay. When I went to college, there was a card catalog. You didn't have computers in colleges when I went to college. They had wor fancy word processors to type your paper. All right. And that was it. But to go look a book up or, or you know, I, when I went and got my master's degree, I had to learn a new way of doing a bibliography and a works cited page because now you have to cite things that you can find in on the internet stuff, which I never was did before. I had MLA memorized from my bachelor's degree. And then when I got my master's degree, it was APA and then it was internet stuff. So you've got advantage. So use the internet, the things you guys are always on your phone. You know, I'm not a big social media person, but you can research stuff. Um, research colleges, places to live, what you want to do and put a plan together because you can go somewhere. And some colleges will give you in-state tuition and now you've got, you know, how much do it cost? I can put out this and I can, you can enjoy life a little bit. So get a plan together. Yeah, and Coralise asks, um, at 15, is 15 a good age to start looking at colleges and what you want to do after high school? Absolutely, I mean, 15, you're daydreaming still. And so start daydreaming, you know, where's somewhere you want to live or something you'd want to do. I mean, when I went to college, Virginia, I got, I was able to, we went fishing. Uh, our guys did a lot of camping up there, our, our team, um, mountain hiking, uh, Blue Ridge Parkway was up there. I got to go up to DC was a few hours away. And we drove up to New York city a few times. You'll find, you'll meet other people from other States and they're like, Hey, you want to come home for the weekend or whatever? And you get to see and do things that you don't want to do. So there are things that you're passionate about and want to do, start researching it and going after it. It's never too young to go after what you want to do. No matter whether it's college or a job or a dream or something like that, you, you got to start chasing it. Thank you so much, Mr. Hackett, Absolutely. for sharing your experience and perspective um, it was really enlightening. Thank you again for coming. Well, hopefully I didn't ramble too much and you guys can make some sense of what I said um, and, and use that to benefit, you know, what you're doing every day. So absolutely. absolutely. All right, guys, have Thank a wonderful you. day. See you at Thanks. lunch. You too. Bye, Mr. Hackett. Bye.